If anybody who remembers from my video from last week about the retail apocalypse, I covered in that video of just how many stores closed throughout 2023. And the figures were this. 4,600 stores across the United States closed and only 5,500 opened. So it was a net positive only 900 stores throughout the entire country, which is not looking good for our economy. But man, oh man, when I came across this information today about the amount of small business delinquencies out there right now, it paints a much worse picture than I thought it was, guys. And I know see, some people say, oh, where's the good news? Where's the good news? Well, okay, how about this? 41% of small businesses right now are reporting that they can't pay their rent. So the good news is 59% of them can, if you want to call that good news, right? So that means more than half are still able to pay their rent without too much trouble, but 41% are not able to, guys. And the reason I report on these things is, is very simple. Like, you see mainly what the mainstream media says is that there's going to be no recession. They say we're going to have a soft landing whenever the Fed starts cutting these interest rates. They say that hiring and jobs are doing well. But all the information that I'm coming across and personal accounts from you guys is telling a quite different story. And so I'm here to tell the other side of the story that you're not going to hear on the news. You know what I'm saying? But before we get into the small business numbers, let's look at what's happening with real estate agents. Because this story, this story about real estate agents was actually sent to me from Richard. And what it says is that 45% of real estate agents that have their own company right now say that they're having trouble paying their rent on their offices. That figures as of November of 2023. So that number is 5% higher than it was in October of 2023, and it's 10% higher than it was in September of 2023. So as you can see, the theme here is the number, amount of people that are struggling to pay the rent is going up, not down. But if you watch the news, all you're going to hear is, oh, small business is doing great. You know, we're creating more and more jobs. The economy is still robust. Nothing to worry about here. But obviously, this is telling a much different picture. And the realtors that they talked about that are having trouble paying the office rent, their reason for this, the number one reason they say, is because mortgage rates at about 7% right now make it very difficult to close transactions. Basically, we already know that buyer demand has dropped through the floor and so has the amount of closed sales this past year. And people that run a real estate business are really feeling it right now. And it's particularly smaller brokerages, not these big nationwide ones. You're not going to see, you know, a bunch of Coldwell bankers or Sotheby's offices closed down because they have the big corporate structure and the volume of commissions to keep coming in to keep the lights on. But you're talking smaller boutique brokerages that maybe only have, you know, 10, 15, 30 agents, you know, and the volume is down so heavily that they're struggling to keep up. You also have a ton of buyers that are backing out of deals right now at numbers that we've basically never seen before. So here we have a waterfront house for sale for $7.9 million. The mortgage payment would be $52,000 a month if you bought this house. And I think it's worth noting that they bought it during the last housing crash. And look what happened back then. In 2007, they listed it for 3.775. Lots and lots of price reductions later, they bought it for 2.235 about a year later in 2008. Took a year to sell this house with that much of a price reduction. That's coming again right now, folks. And these people are in trouble because look at that. They're not paying their property taxes. They haven't paid their taxes for 2022. $55,000 delinquency. Next will be a $63,000 delinquency. These people are probably upside down on this house in terms of not being able to afford it anymore and need to get out just like when they bought it from the previous owner. I mean, literally right now, guys, the amount of pending home sales that we have is at the lowest level that's ever been recorded by the National Association of Realtors. That just goes to show you how many people are out there buying homes right now. These statistics, these figures of the amount of pending sales is lower than what we saw 
during the 2008 financial crisis. Here's the thing, like a lot of people say that we're not gonna have these massive problems like we saw back in 2008. We're not gonna see the economy come crashing down like we did back then. But the reality is different sectors of the economy are already crashing down like it did back then, if not even worse. Firstly, real estate sales and even what we're talking about here with small businesses, that stuff is already worse than it was back then. And I anticipate it's not gonna be that much longer before a lot of the other sectors of the economy start to follow their lead. You know, a lot of you guys saw my, my video I did with Brandon the other day from Car Questions Answered. You know, that was a fun collaboration to do. And he talks about this all the time with the car market, guys. Like, oh yeah, the car sales are up so far this year, but compared to what, guys? You know, compared to what it was pre-pandemic, it's still in the toilet. Okay, so that's what most people need to look at with everything, you know, they say, oh, gas is coming down. Great. The gas is down, but it's still a lot more expensive than it was pre pandemic. You know what I'm saying? But the reality is it's not just real estate businesses that are having trouble. Like I said earlier, uh, according to a study done by Alignable, okay, 41% of small businesses could not afford to pay their rent in full and on time as of November of 2023. So anybody who doesn't think that that's a problem and that's gonna cause ripple effects throughout our economy is delusional, guys. Small businesses are the lifeblood of America. They employ the majority of people out there who have a job. And if that many of them are struggling, if they can't pay their rent, what do you think is gonna happen next? They're gonna be firing a lot of people that work at these small businesses before they go under completely. And if you think this is a new problem, like this is like happening all of a sudden? No, it's been something that's been building up gradually and it's been getting worse and worse by the month. In fact, take a look at this chart going all the way back to January of 2023. The amount of businesses said that they were struggling and couldn't pay their rent in full and on time were 30%. And throughout the year, it gradually ticked up and ticked up till November was at 41%. So you can see the trajectory for this problem is nowhere but up. So where do you think this is gonna go in 2024? You think this is all of a sudden gonna resolve itself, especially that interest rates are still high and small businesses have a severe limitation to getting access to capital and funding right now? You think this problem's gonna get better this year? It's not. This has nothing to do with the housing crash or anything like that. This is a systemic problem we have in our economy. And think about this, guys, if small businesses cannot afford to pay the rent, what else are they gonna be able to not afford to pay? Maybe they're not gonna be able to pay some of their vendors, right? Maybe people are gonna go unpaid. That's gonna cause problems with their business. Maybe they're not gonna be able to pay some of the utility bills. That's gonna cause problems with the local towns and cities. And like we talked about yesterday, all these budget shortfalls that are happening across the country. So all this stuff has ripple effects throughout the economy. And unfortunately, none of it is good. Like anybody who wants to see good news right now, go watch Disney movies, okay? You're gonna find happy endings in every single one of those, but guess what? That's not real life. Like anybody complaining that this news is too negative for you guys, number one, you need to wake up and sniff reality because that's what this is, or just change the channel. You know, watch something that puts you more in the fantasy world that you wanna live in. It doesn't matter to me, you know? You don't have to watch this if you don't want to. Nobody's forcing you to click on this video. So Alignable, along with this study, not only is it showing that the amount of delinquencies and the amount of businesses struggling is continuing to rise, but what it also shows is they break down the type of businesses that are struggling the most, which is very interesting. We can gather some insights from this. When you take a look at this chart, the number one small business that is struggling right now is automotive. Think like a mechanic shop, right? Then you have beauty salons, 54%. Real estate is right at the top of that list. We already talked about that. Retail, hence the retail apocalypse, like I was saying. The national average is right below that, 41%. Restaurants are having problems. Transportation, that's the trucking business that we've been talking about. Finance businesses are having trouble. Construction, constructions, I'm surprised. Musicians and artists, that one's never a surprise. Travel and lodging, another thing that we've been talking about. They keep saying, oh, 
the economy is great because people aren't buying goods, but they're buying services, they're traveling. Well, according to this, travel businesses are on the top 10 list here of businesses that are struggling to pay their rent. Manufacturing is at the very bottom. So basically, all the things that we're being told about how good the economy is, this data that's being pulled directly from small business owners is telling the exact opposite story from what the government and the Fed is trying to tell us right now. So anybody who's been celebrating that, oh, the Fed's going to cut interest rates soon, and this is going to be fantastic for the economy, why do you think they're doing this, guys? It's because they know that this is actually happening, what we're saying right here, and they know that these small businesses are being squeezed out right now and they know that they need to lower rates before unemployment shoots through the roof, but guess what? It's gonna to be too late, just like it has been every other time in history. Every single time they've tried this, it never works. Unemployment inevitably shoots through the roof after they start cutting, and bam, here's the recession. That's just how it goes. That's what history shows us. They did some more research and they talked to these small businesses and wanted to get more insight on why people are having a hard time paying the rent, right? So let's look into this a little bit. The number one reason, rent spikes, the increase in rent, okay? 55% of businesses say they're contending with higher rent requirements now than they had six months ago. And 15% of these small businesses say that they're now being charged 20% more in rent than they were paying just six months ago, guys. So how is a small business supposed to stay in the black with those type of increases happening. You know, it's the same thing that we saw with residential real estate. When you see everybody getting their rent completely jacked up to the moon, how are people supposed to continue to afford it? Oh, that's right, they can't. So what do they do? They move out, they look for a more affordable place, and if they can't find one, they move in with friends and family and start huddling together to the point where they can afford it. That's what people are doing. Except with businesses, that's not really an option unless you're gonna have you know, three businesses under one roof, which on occasion you do see that, and who knows, maybe that could be the future trend, but you know what that trend's also gonna bring? It's gonna bring fewer employees and fewer jobs for you. The next reason these businesses are struggling? Interest rates. 58% of them say that interest rates are hurting them, cutting into their margins, reducing consumer spending as their customers have less money, and making it harder to pay off loans or secure new ones. Alignable says that this is another one of their stats that's continuing to increase month after month. Just like the businesses that are struggling, more and more of them continue to say how interest rates are taking a toll on their monthly budgets. Now, 49% of these small businesses also said that there's no way they're going to be able to recover from their current situation until interest rates start coming down by at least three points. Right now, the federal funds rate's at like 5.25%. So they're saying it needs to come down to 2.25% until they can start to recover from this, guys. You think that's realistic? You think that's going to happen in 2024? Because I don't. I don't think that's gonna happen at all. 59% of the small businesses say they're still struggling tremendously due to higher inflation. That inflation is still significantly impacting their business. Even though inflation has come down, it doesn't mean that prices still aren't sky high for everything that businesses need to operate, guys. Like, that's this whole illusion with inflation. They're talking about how, you know, inflation is coming down and this is fixing the economy. No, it isn't, you know? It just means that things are not going up in price as fast as they were before. That's the only thing that's happening right now. It doesn't mean anything is getting cheaper. There are some things that are getting cheaper, like we talked about a few days ago, but the vast majority of things are still way above what they were pre-pandemic before all this money printing shenanigans took place. And so basically, those added costs that these businesses incur due to inflation need to be passed on to their customers, which ultimately hurts their sales volume because like they said before, customers are also having a hard time and they're not buying things as much because they don't have as much money. So you can see how these interest rates are starting to work their way through this economy. 49% of businesses also said that all these huge online companies like Amazon, for example, all the big online retailers have been 
been hurting their business tremendously, especially since the pandemic. You know, less and less people are going out to mom and pop stores on the actual street and they're staying home and buying everything online. And that's going to be a big problem for many retailers or many small businesses moving forward. I don't see that problem getting any better ever, really, because, you know, it is just so convenient to buy stuff online. We're all guilty of it. I do it too. I buy almost everything online because I don't want to be driving around, wasting all my time, sitting in traffic, especially in a place like here in Miami, you know, constantly trying to buy stuff, guys. But it comes with negative consequences. It comes with businesses closing. It comes with people losing jobs. It also comes with, you know, making it harder to actually find things in person. Just like I was talking about the other day with all the people that are canceling streaming and how I'm buying more physical media now. I'm buying more Blu-rays and 4K Blu-rays on disc. Well, those are even getting harder to find in the store because people aren't buying them in the store, right? They buy them online. Like Best Buy stopped carrying physical media in the store. You can't buy it in the store anymore starting in the beginning of this year, but you can still buy it from their website. They still carry it but you can't buy it in the store anymore. So here we have another waterfront house for sale, but this one's only 2.99 million since it's on the canal and it's not open bay. But anyways, like I was saying earlier, it's 2008 all over again. Check this listing out. They listed it in August of 2022 for 4.5 million. Price reduction after price reduction, guys. They're down to 2.9 and the house is unsold. It's also sitting here empty for rent for $25,000 a month. Can't get it rented either. And it's just sitting here. Meanwhile, the property tax bill is $38,000 a year, along with all the upkeep and maintenance that comes with an expensive waterfront house. Honestly, I don't understand how these uh, small businesses that have a brick and mortar retail location are going to fight against you know, these big online juggernauts, guys, because the competition is just you know, night and day. Like the convenience aspect being offered with that, a lot of times the pricing too, a lot of times these small businesses cannot offer the same product at the same price to you if they want to make a profit. And it's really sad news for them, really. And as much as I love buying things online, just like the next guy, like I kind of dread the day when you can't go into a store anymore and buy things that you need to buy. Like I, I shared another example with you guys the other day, like shoes, you know? It's very hard to find a good pair of shoes. And I went to multiple stores where they still sell shoes in person and I didn't like anything, you know? Trying to buy this stuff online is a huge hassle because you're constantly buying something, it doesn't fit, have to ship it back with a return and then buy something else again. And there's a lot of back and forth. Not only is that wasteful, it's waste energy, it wastes resources that we have on this planet, but also it's just, inconvenient right what's more convenient is to go to a store try on five pairs of shoes and walk out with one that fits perfect right but even today something like that is becoming almost impossible at least it is for me one of the worst things is from all of this is that 69 percent of the small businesses say that they still have not fully recovered financially from the pandemic. That's a lot, guys. 69% have not recovered from the pandemic, meaning that that was four years ago when all of this madness started, and four years later, these businesses still have not been able to pull themselves together. And those are the lucky ones that were able to weather the storm to begin with and stay in business throughout this whole thing. And now that it's all over, you just can't find a way to turn a profit, guys. They're still struggling. So it turns out shutting down the global economy probably wasn't such a good idea, huh? I ain't gonna get into that again. Basically, what I gathered from all of this, guys, is in 2024, if you think it was bad, we saw how many stores closed down in 2023, it's gonna be even worse in 2024 with these numbers of businesses steadily rising that simply cannot afford to pay their rent. They can't afford to pay the bills. And what that translates to is, you know, six months down the road, closing the doors forever, or if they have 10 people working for them, maybe now it's only gonna be five. Like I said, this is the year it all comes together because you have the Fed saying they're gonna start cutting rates in 2024, but the economy is still supposedly strong. So it would be very weird for them to cut rates if things were actually going strong because there's no real incentive for them to do it. 
But my hunch is they know these statistics that we're talking about here in this video and they know how much small businesses are struggling and they're going to start cutting rates to try and make an attempt to save them, right? They're going to try to make the attempt to allow these small businesses to, to get more access to capital or have make it cheaper for them to pay off their loans and things like that. The problem is it's going to be too little too late just like what happens every single time we go through this cycle. This is why I keep telling everybody like get ready for this recession guys like not only is it in the data that it happens every time we end up in this cycle but based on what we're seeing right here there's no way any of this stuff is going to improve in 2024 without a sheer magic trick okay and as far as I know magic's not real unless you want to live in the Disney fantasy world then it's real every day if, if you live in Disney. But I'm preparing for what's happening in the real world and the real world figures are showing that businesses are going under and that's going to increase unemployment which is also going to increase delinquencies across the board on credit cards, car loans, mortgages, you name it and that's going to push us further down this slippery slope that we're on. If you guys enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe to the channel and if you don't want to wait for my next video to come out check out this one on the screen right over here and I'll see you in the next one.